Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the newest series, Life Support. <clears throat> Today we're going to start out with the basic building block of lighting. <clears throat> so first I'll go over what I have running. So I have three Kessel A360s. Two of them are wide-angle and the third one is a narrow angle because I couldn't find any more wide angle ones. So these are tuna blue, which means predominantly they show the blue spectrum, but you can get them to, the, to a mostly white spectrum. These are the older models. They're discontinued. Um, this is called just reefing on a budget, right? <clears throat> they go from this spectrum now, let's see if I can get the controller cable out here, all the way to a mostly white spectrum that you'll see during the day. Okay. They have two ways of being controlled. One is through just these knobs. The knobs control intensity and color spectrum. The other way is through a controller, um, through its aux cord. Okay. Now I use the Apex for that. Um, I believe Hydros can control them as well. Um, so it uses one of your variable ports. It actually uses two of them. Um, so it uses one channel for the intensity and one channel for the color. And uh, I'll touch on that a little bit more once we go into the controllers um, <clears throat> of how to program all that in. But when we're talking about spectrum and stuff, I'll talk about it as well. So they're hung from a central eye hook, then a carabiner, a locking carabiner, and then their actual physical piece. I am going to make a video on how to disassemble these and clean them, because obviously these are out of warranty, right? So if you need to clean them or do something to them to try and get them to last a little bit longer, you've got to do it yourself. Now, why I use Kessel? Um, a lot of people are all into the Radeons and and whatnot, um, but I, I mean, quite frankly, I don't have a thousand dollars to spend on one light, and I would need three, so I don't have three grand just laying around to dump on lights. Okay, um, I might be able to get away with just two of them, but still, uh, I can get one of a, one of the brand new Kessels with the Wi-Fi dongle for six hundred dollars. So that's like a huge savings, um, and. With Kessel, if you own a Kessel, they'll take your old one, even if it's broken and not functional, and they'll give you like a, a rebate price to buy a brand new one. <clears throat> I've never heard of any of the other companies offering that to anyone who owns their products. So to me, that that's a huge thing. Of, uh, they want you if you want to upgrade then the company you know wants that as well uh, they run off of this basic power supply plugs in there I have it loop and then it goes down and it actually goes to like a small like power strip item that has three plugs and all of them plug into one port on the apex one power one plug in the EBA 32 to monitor all of the lights power all at once. <clears throat> so, so this is the beginning of the day for the fish. So this is more of their blue spectrum. As the be as the day arises, the the lights will ramp up, and the color will the color spectrum will change more to a white. Kessel only allows you to change basically those colors. They don't allow you, like some of the other systems, to add in 
green or red spectrum, which causes more algae growth. Um, they've done the research, they pick the spectrum that it's going to be showing and sit at, and that's what they let you choose from, which I appreciate um, because I'm not a scientist, I'm not a biologist by any means. So people who have done the research, I'm going to let them choose what spectrum. And I'll pick just between what they allow me to pick of what looks more appealing to my eye at that moment. So why is lighting so important? So the light isn't for the fish, right? The light tells the fish that it's morning and that they need to be up and functional, right? But the light is for the coral. First, let me switch to my aquarium cam app so that you can see the colors a little bit better. All right, so here we are. So the light is for these things, right? All of the coral. Oh, not you, Gil, thank you. So it's for this, right? It's for the coral. You see that they're super happy. They get all these beautiful color pigments, right? And this is what's so amazing with coral reefs. It's just the, the wide range of colors that you don't see. <clears throat> zoom in here, adjust, there we go. Right. So this is what we want. This, this is what the light's for. The light isn't for the fish. So the coral has this photosynthetic zooanthellae. A symbiotic algae that is inside of it and it gives these colors off under the the u basically it's the uv spectrum which shows up more with the blue spectrum there's that coral that i saved um and gives these popping colors thank you scar so that's where the colors come from And they need more of the white spectrum is more for their photosynthetic production and growth. Um, but so the, I start this up and then they get about three hours of the white spectrum, the more white full spectrum, which promotes more of the the zo zooanthellae growth and production and feeding. Um, <clears throat> but the rest of it is just kind of ramping up and down with the color, the, the blue. There's a little mushroom I found. Didn't know I had him. There's my favorite fungia plate. You can see in the blue, and this is kind of like on the spectrum going up, so it's not totally blue, but the color pops even more, the more blue versus white light that there is. Now, we need different levels of light intensity depending on what the coral needs are. So it's important to know which coral needs to be placed at what level in your tank to get the lighting requirements that it needs, along with flow requirements and everything else. Um, and how, what, what intensity you need to run your lights at to get that coral to be where it needs to be and the light that it needs to survive and flourish. So next we're gonna hop over to the computer so that I can show you some pictures on spectrum and whatnot that we can that's easier explained um with things to look at so here's what we're talking about when we talk about the spectrum of light this is just the kessel a360w just as a reference point a lot of them have the same and some are a little bit different bulk reef supply has a bunch of videos that cover this in detail where they do in fact test the spectrum of each individual light. Um, <clears throat> this is just Kessel's version. 
Uh, this was found on Reef to Reef. It's a great resource if you have any questions or you want to learn and talk to other people. Um, so the bottom is nanometers, uh, basically the light spectrum. Right? So down here at the left side, if you look in the highest, the middle one, uh, the left, farther left you go is ultraviolet and violet, then it goes to the blue spectrum, yellows, greens, and then reds. You'll see that red is very little, along with green is pretty very little as well, um, because those are light, uh, sorry, those are spectrums of light that look better to our eyes, uh, but are more uh, prevalent for growing algae and nuisance algae as well. <clears throat> so what you want to see is more peaks and spikes in the blue or the and the violet and ultraviolet region as opposed to spikes in the green, the yellow, or the red uh, wavelengths. Each light has its own peaks, but they're all generally pretty close to the same anymore. Um, it's all just kind of a form factor of what controllability you want, what shape you want, and how much you're willing to spend, too. There's uh, dozens of different types. right? You don't even have to go with LED, honestly. Uh, there's other options out there. With their all have their uh, pros and their cons. Uh, so first is T fives. So T fives is not completely super old school, but pretty old school. Right? This is the kind of lighting you have. Uh, you purchase individual bulbs. They will screw in there. This one happens to be an ATI controllable dimmable one. Um, but you have to pick your bulb that you want to use for that, and in turn, those bulbs will die out. Uh, and you have to replace the bulbs. Um, there's white ones, there's uh, blue ones, ultraviolet ones, um, but next up is metal halide, which is kind of the same idea. Um, metal halide is more old school. This is actually the only metal halide fixture I could find on Bulk Reef Supplies um, website, and uh, it has an LED strip on either side of it as well. Now again, these use a ton more energy, even more energy than the T5s. So we're going to focus on LEDs because that is probably the biggest form factor that there is. So as you see, there are dozens. Uh, there's six, seven, eight, nine, twelve. There's probably about f fifteen options on Bulk Reef Supplies website. Uh, some of them are more focused for refugium lighting uh, because that does need a different wavelength of light to grow the algae better. That focuses more on like a green and a red spectrum. And I can show you, uh, when I show you our sump, you'll see that our refugium light has that more red light to it. Okay. Um, and like I said, they're all about the same. It's just what kind of control they have what kind of options they have. The spectrum is almost all about the same with them anymore. Um, it's just how much controllability do you want, how much do you want to spend, and um, how they'll mount, um, and form factor. Um, some of them don't look great just hanging out, <laughs> so you might want them to look uh, nicer. Like, uh, radions have a great sleek look to them. Those I would mount, you know, exterior, outside of a cabinet, um, anytime. They are beautiful, gorgeous looking lights. Um, the Kessels are, have their own kind of look as well, uh, but, you know, I'm not sure that I would have them hanging outside of a cabinet, personally. So, here's the reasons why I use Kessel. They have, like, a superior shimmer to all the other ones because of this dense LED matrix that they developed so you get like that shimmer look that you see in the actual ocean which is something that is really important to me um, because I, I like that look um, I don't like the look of like a different light 
shimmering off to the side, you know, where, like, it's blue going off this way and red going off this way and white going this way. It's more compact and dense, so you get it nice like that. And that's what I really like with the Kessels. Um, this is their uh, dimming and improved transitioning. Um, a lot of the lights are even including this moonlight effect now, which is predominantly an ultraviolet spectrum light. Um, which is interesting. Uh, but if I were to upgrade to these lights, I, I don't know that I would use it. Um, there is some saying that the ultraviolet spectrum damages the lenses more uh, and shortens the lifespan of, of the light. So I think I would still stick to my moonlights that I have running through the Apex to run them. So that is really all I have about lighting. Um, it's super important that you find one that works for you, works for your tank, and take note of how deep it's rated to penetrate, um, what its PAR readings can be, all of which can be found on uh, either forums, Reef to Reef, or Bulk Reef Supply list them a lot as well and their recommended coverage area. So I have two light, three lights because I have a seven foot tank, uh, sorry, six foot tank, and they're rated only to cover two by two feet. So that means I need three lights. Uh, so at the end of the day, this is an ultra important thing for you to consider and consider firstly when you are planning your tank because it's literally the life support <laughs> of it. So take your time, research everything that you want to need and that you want to have in your tank and what your budget is as well before you, you know, go and start pouring money into it. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any other questions, leave them below and we'll see you so later.